Hello, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Nick Vidal. I'm from the Brazilian community. And it's a great honor for me to present Fernando from Peru, from the Peruvian community. He has been a great community leader helping spread Drupal in Latin America. And he's going to present about Drupal services. Um, and I really look forward to it. So, Fernando, thank you. Thanks for your kind words, Nick. So hi, everyone. Thanks for coming to the DrupalCon, uh, for coming to my session. I'm really surprised for the many people that is here. Um, so I have a question for you. Uh, but I just wanted to show this slide about uh, me. Perhaps you know about the guinea pig, you know? And my nickname, Devil Kui. And I'm really uh, in love of the community. I, uh, so that's why I used to spread Drupal in Latin America as much as I can. Uh, but uh, there, are, there are lots of many folks there. But let's talk about web services. Um, the question is, uh, what do you use Drupal for? Uh, do, do you, have the, you have the microphone there. Can you please stand up and tell me? In two words, what, what do you use, use Drupal for? Rapid prototyping. OK, that's, that's one. Good. Uh, another, apart from rapid prototyping. You use Drupal for web development, right? You make modules, themes. What else? CMS, some. E-commerce, <laughs> API. What do you use API for? Sorry? Uh, marketing okay, that's interesting. But uh, w why don't we think about more uh, of the web stuff that Dries shared you know, a few hours ago, uh, the web experience management? And that, that uh, new vision we have as a community, I think that needs uh, a new technology. You know? It's not that new, but it needs, it needs more you know, uh, more of it, perhaps. So wanted to share you real quick about Cara. Cara is a product I've been part of for about four months last year. It's uh, done by the, it's created by the Immersive uh, Labs. It's a startup. So it's really amazing, the project. So it's like, imagine there is a webcam up there in the screen, and it's taking a photo of uh, you know 25 people only, unfortunately yet, but there there will be many of them, and it can grab the statistics from the real world. What we track right now in, with Google Analytics and the other alternatives are only 10% of the data. So there is a world, a universe, left to conquer, to measure, you know, and that technology needs. Uh, sorry, that that uh, technology of Cara and it's another technology called software as a service, Drupal services perhaps or others, you know, OAuth, and that that's part of the one uh, what I want wanted to show you today. Um, and this session is inspired of, of the is inspired on the tools that we uh, use it in that project. Okay. Uh, and there is a lesson learned from this first part, you know, is that Drupal will help you to mature your ideas. Okay, who of you use Drupal for a product, not only a website, a classic website, perhaps something like Buzzer or, you know, similar. Okay, um, perhaps you could come from a PHP script or just a HTML website. Then you wanted to make it dynamic. And there is a moment when the product is really growing so fast. You go uh, perhaps on angel capital, you know, and that's what happened to to this project, the Cara project. They are they move it to Singapore, and they had to change the technology. They have to move off Drupal, and that's fine actually because they needed a technology better suited for their moment. I mean, the right technology for the right time. Drupal helped a lot for this product to mature and to 
uh, test many uh, possibilities of, for this project real quick because there are thousands and thousands of modules and themes and you know possibilities. You can add many, many, many functionalities to Drupal real quick, you know, and once you have the, the right thing, you know, you, ha you have your idea really mature and it's really valuable, you have, you know, the money to make it a scale and you get rich. Uh, well, it's perhaps, I don't know, perhaps you can stay in Drupal or you can uh, move out. It depends on what the technology, you know, what technology is the best. Drupal is not the, is not the best for everything. Uh, but my, my, uh, my session is uh, now focused in uh, the product when it's on Drupal. So what Drupal can offer you now to make your ideas mature, okay? Thinking on ideas as software as a service, you know? There is the, the theory of this. Uh, basically, it's a software delivery method that provides access to software and its functions uh, remotely as a web-based service. Uh, many people call it on-demand software or application service providers. It's, it's the same. You know, it's, uh, it's also about um, communicating not a person, because regularly it's a person. You, many of you have a computer here. We interact with the web through a web browser. But web services are more, more about um, data. So one system gets data, interacts with another system, talks to another system, you know, in this way. The request, request and the response. The client, it will be a, a server, it will be a web browser, it will be backbone.js talking to a, uh, a server. This server in, in the case would be Drupal. Okay, that's the basic architecture. And there are many, you know, software as a service products out there, uh, like Buzzer and Drupal, Twitter, Amazon, uh, MailChimp, Flickr, AuthorizeNet, and many, many of them. They're, they're just examples. You know, one of, one of, uh, some of them have Drupal in the backend. And I would like you to put your name there, the, the, the name of your product, you know? Uh, so there is this module called services. Have you ever used the services module? Okay. And who of you code are developers? Yeah, that's why this is a coding plus development track. But you know, there are, there are not a no uh, and coders for this session to talk uh, in code to show you code examples. Perhaps we can organize a BOF later, but uh, it's more theory now, so you can know what the technology is and how it can help you to uh, make money from it to make a business, you know, with this technology. Um, of course, there are some uh, famous clients like uh, many, many uh, mobile apps. You know, you can actually, with the services module, create, create a web service and create a web app, or oh, sorry, a mobile app that connects to it. Uh, we know the TweetDeck, I love Buffer, ba Backbone.js. I have heard about one product that is very famous. It's called uh, Unfollowers Me. It's using Drupal. Uh, the creator is here, percent. It's using Drupal in the backbone. Uh, sorry, in the, in the back. Uh, in the back end. Uh, so the front end is backbone. The idea also is to uh, move part of the computing load from the back end to the front end. You know, so we don't have to exhaust the servers, you know, calculating the front end when we can just uh, allow the browsers to cache the interface of, or most of this, like Gmail. You know, you have this nice interface that is built on JavaScript, and there are some servers in the backend serving the actual uh, data. And also, CRED. CRED is an example of a client, but a service at the same time, at the same time because it connects to your Twitter, right? It grabs your data, and it makes some analytics. 
And you can also connect to CRED to uh, instrument that data, grab it from CRED. So when we talk about web uh, services, software as a service, we're talking about uh, another principles like interoperability, you know, and we are able to string one service to the other, like a production line, perhaps, okay? So the data is coming from perhaps the real world with a camera, but it will pass over or through a long process with many services in the middle, and they could be Drupal or others, you know, and um, at the end it will serve for a, a lot of purposes. Um, if you want to play with, uh, with web services, if you want to consume services uh, using Drupal, okay, perhaps you want to create another CRED-like uh, website, or you want to connect to a web service or a service provided by the, by the bank or a enterprise um, proprietary um, software or, or system, perhaps you can use Gasol. Gasol is in core and is a really amazing tool. I have used in this in this car project. Uh, it helps us a lot because it's not using uh, the cool library. Who of you know the cool library? Have you heard about? Yeah, only a few people because it's really it's really uh, a pain in the neck to work with it. Uh, it's really complex. It is using flags all the time, and you don't know uh, exactly how this will behave, and you don't have a nice way to debug this. You know, instead with Gazelle, you have a beautiful class and you have this object-oriented uh, uh, programming uh, interface for you. It improves a lot the, the, ex the experience of the coders, of the programmers, you know. So it's good for, um, f uh, for, for your experience when you, when you code, I mean that. Uh, now let's talk about... Uh, more about um, how we are supposed to interact with the services. When you are when you are connecting to a service like perhaps events.com or uh, Twitter, you know it supports, it listens, you know, to some formats and it speaks in other formats. Okay, so say you wanna you send a a request in JSON. You can ask to the uh, to make a response in XML. Okay, so if you are planning to implement a web service to create a web service, I recommend you to support the standard ones, preferably JSON, who is is really easy to uh, to parse. There are, there are virtually. Uh, a parser of JSON format for every language created, and also it's very short, very compact, you know, and it, also, it helps the, uh, believe it or not, it, it, it helps the performance of the web service. When you use XML, you know, web, the XML format, it's really a lot of text, and if you wanna reply, answer true, you know, so your, your script is connecting to, to the service, and it's requesting for a tweet, the last tweet, and it it, res it replies in in XML. You know, it's a lot of code, and you have to parse it using the DOM uh, library, and it's, it's really <laughs> difficult when you can just parse this in JSON format, and you have everything almost ready, you know, and it, it's really handy. And you can also use any serial serializable. Actually, it's just about having some array in memory and you dump it to a format. You can create your own format if you want. The banks, networks use the bi a binary format. They create their own binary format to, to communicate between the network of the banks. Uh, uh, so it's up to you. It, perhaps that would be a proprietary, you know. But I still recommend you JSON a lot. So I, I want to set one conclusion here. Um, is that SaaS encourages you to embed new services, you know, and focus on the on the core business. You can you can you can uh, buy services from other providers, and the most common is in e-commerce. You buy the the payment gateway, right? Uh, so you don't have to be an expert in 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 payment gateways. You can just connect to PayPal, 
and it just works. But you can, uh, here in DrupalCon, you have heard about many technologies, perhaps not so many of them, but there are new uh, startups creating products with Drupal. So let's design your business saying, okay, this web service will help me with this, this part, and this part, and this part, and this part, and I will make the, my web service to focus on this part. This is the core of my business. I will, I will let the others focus on their own core business. Okay, and though I'm talking about, uh, again, communication and interaction between systems. So that, uh, that will happen in the, in the system level. You basically will automate all the stuff. You will just need to connect the plugs and you will get a solid system, well, supposedly, you know, uh, to work. Uh, so let, continuing with the presentation, I would like to show you how this works, you know, in Drupal. So we could have a Drupal site called it Drupal.org. Okay, uh, perhaps I don't. I am not sure if this the this conference has a app, a mobile app for it. But let's imagine that we have a mobile app uh, for the conference, and this app will show us the list of the sessions. I am. I am subscribed to, and it will show me, uh, you know, the my schedule, my personal schedule, yeah. and will email me about the next session I have. Will remind me uh, about my session, my sessions. So I I have in this case some mobile apps, and it has a client for a desktop application, and it will be connected to other Drupal sites. It will be connected to Drupal event site, uh, the Drupal, you know, the Drupal. Website, website that uh, is a calendar of all the events happening uh, in in the world of the all the Drupal events happening in the world. So perhaps this website of the conference will be connected to that other website and will be they will be sharing uh, information data, you know, some data, and uh, 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 perhaps we can have a kiosk out there that is connected also to the website and allows you to interact, you know real time with the uh, with the schedule you know so there we can we are starting to extend with this uh, software as a service technology Drupal from uh, the digital world to the real world you know we we are uh, letting letting other systems connect to to our data source you know to our source of data uh, to access this information and to make it uh, valuable for the right time and the right moment. You know, I would like actually to have a kiosk application here. You know, uh, to see the schedule and connected to the to the conference website. Um, you know, as I am, I am saying the example. Um, so continuing with more of this theory, I, w I would like to talk about uh, open data. Uh, open data is related to the services, you know, because this is not only about uh, profitable business. I think that uh, we are also uh, connected with the government, many of the governments, many of the newspapers. You know, there is a lot, a world and, uh, of data, and there is, uh, there is a lot of years of uh, information in newspapers that are stored in some database in MySQL in some place, you know. And that information is accessible only through the web browser. So if you want to gather some of this data that is publicly available but, but it's not semantic, it's not easy to gather and to measure, you know, uh, perhaps we will need some kind of web services that allows us that. Perhaps we need some tool that opens it and the services module will, will help to that. You know, um, we have only w a problem that uh, is not that easy as just install the services module and you can share everything. Actually, the services module is an API. We need to code uh, the interface. We have to code a, a, a service. You know, perhaps for the, the my example, we just have to uh, to to code some uh, some view and make it uh, accessible through a web service. Uh, thanks to the services module, 
and uh, it shows the list of all the news of this web, uh, newspaper from the first in 1950 to the last one, okay? Uh, it, it sounds easy, but uh, it needs to be designed, you know? And, but that would be, I mean, the, uh, the web uh, a bit better. There is another effort for this. It's called the semantic web. And there is a microformat, and there is other stuff, you know, that makes the website uh, readable for the humans or for the computers. Uh, you can do more data meaning uh, with that, but I don't think that the, that's the only solution. I think that we can directly open the, the data, just the data, and let the, the computers calculate uh, and access the direct data, not, the, not only a website, you know, that is showing some, some news there. Uh, and I think that also is democratic. And if you are if you, ha you are connected to, to, some, to some newspaper site, if you are connected to a ONG or nonprofit or the government, I invite you to encourage your organization to open the, your data. To, it's really not that hard. It will take you like eight hours to code a, a new service, you know, so please make it happen. It's not that hard. And also, it's a, it, it was not uh, in the session, but, um, or in the slides, but it's, it actually is better performance. If you create a web service, you are just printing JSON, and that's a lot easier than print than format than, than rendering the the world page, you know. So if somebody really wants to grab your, your your whole database, let you know, let it do it. It would be so easy. It will take you just one pitch prescript to parse all the data. They store it. They do the calculations and. Done. Or you can also sell it. You know, you can market it, and you sell it for some money, and that's it. But uh, it w I, I think that would be make it, uh, you know, easier, you know, even that way. So let's talk about uh, high performance and scalability. Uh, let's say that we have opened a newspaper to the world. We have a web service that again is in JSON. It's, it has a, uh, the ability to, to list the news by month, by day. Uh, you can search, you can pass a keyword to filter the news, and it, it will look the news related to it. And will show you the title and the, and the body, okay? I am, I, I'm going to be more teachy at this point, because it's, it was supposed to be a code plus development session, so. Uh, but we, we have that example in mind, okay? So we need to design, we need to design uh, the performance of this web service, you know? So we have to set some limits because we are talking about now the cloud. Our data is in the cloud. That newspaper is in the cloud. We wanna share that information, all that information to the world. But we cannot, share the world, uh, okay, you, let's just download, you know, the world newspaper to your, to your computer. You know, that would be crazy. We need to set some limits, like uh, max connections, max rows, we can use pag pag pagination, so we can serve the data each hundred re records, okay? Uh, we, can, we can limit the size of the, the, the output, and uh, we have to s set not uh, only safe limits, but reasonable, okay? Uh, because I have seen some web services that uh, when you connect to them, they are really, uh, they don't, doesn't make sense. It, they just limit you so much. It looks like some IT department manager, you know, have looked at the specs and said, no, that's not safe, and it will break the servers, and you can only list 10 rows per, Per connection, you know, and uh, and we have we have to uh, include it uh, in. Uh, we have to pass this web service to be to a VPN, and we have to make this and that, and you make it so complex that you don't let it. Uh, you know, you are not making your clients uh, the life easy, you know. Uh, and I'm going to talk about that later. How to make easy to to your clients? I mean, you have you own one web service. How to make that uh, web service uh, 
easy to, to work with to, to the clients, to the people who is going to use that web service, to the developers actually who are going to, uh, to are coding the, the clients to connect with to the web service. Uh, so that's why I'm recommending OAuth uh, as a, a standard that helps with the performance uh, here. Uh, I have seen the, in the services module that you have this Drupal authentication. So you, you pass your user and password to the web service and it returns a JSON array with the world user object. It has your username, it has your password hash, it has your email and uh, like 100 more uh, properties there in that array, you know, and that's, it doesn't really make any, any, any sense uh, for me to, sh to serve all that information uh, you know, when, wh what, when, why, uh, the only thing I want is perhaps welcome to the web service, true, you are, you are connected, log in to this web service and the service will return true, you are logged in, or error, or false, you know, something more small and easier to work with, you know, and OAuth helps you with that in other way, perhaps not the way I am, I am saying it, I'm going to talk that about, about later. So I am almost finished. I am close to finish this. Another point, another uh, thing we have to think about in the uh, in this presentation about web services is the interoperability. So there are some uh, lessons learned for from from my experience. I would like to share with uh, to you, and perhaps you have some lessons to share to the audience. I would like to ask you at the, at the finish when there is the, the question time you have experience with web services and there is some lesson that you want to share, some lesson learned, please share it. Uh, so I asked you if you are implementing or creating web service, please make it open ears and uh, make it a speak as many standard formats as it can, okay, and to read them also, you know, the ones that are viable so also make it them wise uh, in, in the sense that it only serves the data that is actually uh, needed in the context. Um, as I told you before, and make it compact and expressive. You know, I have seen some web services that are really, com are really confusing. They have keys in, in the properties, you know, in the imagined one JSON array again, it has the, it says the username, like you, you, the value of the username, and the password is P, and you have another field that is, that is T, I don't know what is T, it's a number, perhaps it's the time, you know, and, but th this, this uh, value is written in, in a string, so I, honestly, you know, it's really hard, and many times there, these web services don't have documentation, you know, they, sometimes they think that when I connect to the web service and I grab the data and I read to the fields, it's all I need. And that's not right, actually. You know, when you have a web service, it's like I am interoperating with a system, so the system has to tell me. Uh, you have to first go to this endpoint, to this web service. You have to connect here. Uh, you, will, you will get this data and it will, se it will uh, uh, serves you this information and will help you to connect to this other, you know, part of the system and you can use this for that and, and that, you know. And it's even better when you provide with code examples because in some implementations uh, you cannot even connect to the system because you are passing one integer when the system expected one string but the system even told you that it was expecting some string. So there is no way to debug it for you. And you have to guess, or you have to call your provider and tell you, I am, you know, you have to see it. I am using this, this, uh, this script I have created. I am pretty sure that this works. I am pretty sure that this is working really well. And that happened, that happened to, you, to me many times. They told me, what wrong, what I'm making wrong? You know, I am using Ruby on Rails. And I, I, I said, my customer, well, the web service is in PHP and I don't code in Ruby on Rails. Uh, really, honestly, I don't know how to how can I help you because I don't know Ruby on Rails. Uh, 
and he told me, have you documented what the system expects as an input and with what will it output? Or is there any error message that I have to look for? Is there any log I can watch to, to know what's the error? So it was really in embarrassing for me because I was thinking that, you know, just interacting with the plane system will provide, you know, documentation. That's not right. You know, it makes sense uh, for all the systems to have well documentation. A good one. So a, a new conclusion we, we might have here is that uh, Drupal empowers you to innovate. Uh, it, pr it provides you with thousands of modules and teams you can plug into your system. And it, it provides you with faster, uh, it helps you to, to, to develop faster and gives you uh, more time to mature your process, as, as, I, as I told you. And uh, so you can, you can focus on marketing your, your product on time. Okay, if you have this great business idea, um, it would be uh, really sad that you market it so late, right? It would not make sense to release uh, so late to, to make it uh, uh, success, successful. Uh, and you may you may uh, have all these uh, inconveniences along the way, and I wanted to, to show you what what those will be. Um, so let let's start now the the last part of my presentation. Uh, it's about OAuth. Um, OAuth is a, a standard, and is a child uh, of OpenID. When uh, I can remember the name of the author, but he was working with OpenID, uh, trying to provide some authentication that is different to authorization. He was trying to provide some authorization for a uh, a system. Uh, he thought, okay, OpenID is interesting. It provides me with you know many interesting tools, and I think it will fit to my uh, requirements. Uh, so he was confused with between the authentic. Sorry, I don't know what. Okay, no problem. I have my I have ended my presentation with OAuth. My computer just turned it off. I don't know what's going on, but sorry for, sorry about that. But he was he he, he was confused about author between comp uh, authorization and uh, authentication. Okay. So it was time for him to establish clearly that difference. So you have your, you have your, your ID, okay? Imagine I am in the airport, I present my ID, and it, uh, it says who I am uh, for, uh, it says I am Fernando, okay? So that's my ID, that's my identity. And in the web, we used to have many identities. We create an account on each single uh, possible, you know, uh, web application we can. Uh, sorry. So, you, we create an account, you know, in Yahoo, in Google, in Facebook, in Twitter, and you, we have many passwords, and we have filled our name and our last name are, and many of our data sensible data to many, many web applications. So we have these many identities all over you know, the internet. That doesn't make any sense. So then the people created OpenID. And it says, we are going to have this, open, this uh, identity provider. So it will centralize your identity. And this will authorize other systems to access your identity. OK? And this, then this central system will provide you with an authorization. You understand the difference now? So uh, the immigration control in the airport gives me a B sign my passport, and that's my authorization. So I can get into the country. Okay, and OAuth is about that. It's about authorization. It's about the permission you give in a limited context within a limited period because my identity 
is uh, perpetual. I am Fernando, Fernando all the time. I don't change my identity, okay? Uh, but I, I, I have restrictions, like in the conference. I have a batch, uh, and it provides me with access, with authorization to the conference, okay? And OAuth is about managing and uh, architecting with a uh, uh, with a really flex flexible and scalable way the resources you have in your system. Uh, so you can you can now think in, on your website not as a bunch of sections but as a uh, conclusion of resources. So you have a resource that allows you to post content. You have a resource that allows you to uh, uh, to list content. You have a resource that allows you to access the users. To, you have a, another resource to access this and that and other stuff, you know? So you distribute your system in different uh, resources together. And just a sec. And then you provide access to the to the users, uh, sorry, to the clients, to this particular part of the system. Okay, and and we are doing that all the time, and perhaps you don't know it. We are using Facebook and Twitter and Google, so these systems have all implemented already. The when you are using your iPhone or your smartphone, and you are using the, 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 the Twitter application. It asks you to provide you uh, to provide the system with a user and a password. That's your identity key. So you say that this app connect using this user and password to this system, to Twitter. Okay. So your application there in the in the in this device will get authorization to tweet and to access your tweets. So you don't know that, but actually it will get, it will get a OAuth key that will allow this system, okay? So say this is the, this is the server and I am the tweet ap application. I am trying to connect here. So here is the user and the user will connect, will bring me the user and password, I will connect to the server, and the server will, will provide me with an authorization. Okay? I get the authorization, and then any time for a limited period, that is not defined yet, I can tweet. The user will ask me to tweet something. The user will ask me to get the list of the new tweets, tweets you know? So I am the interface, and here in the server is the data, and here is the user. And the user can connect to the system um, through the website, that, that is another interface, and will say, I don't want this device to connect anymore. So you can disallow me, the user can disallow me to connect to the server. Okay, it's like when you go to, into an hotel, you get a card, and this card for a limited period allows you to open the door of a room. Okay, so OAuth is all about that. It provides you with a way to authorize uh, users to access resources. And it, it has all the, this standard has all the architecture, this standard has uh, all the philosophy on, on it. And uh, well, I try to make my, uh, my best to explain you with my limited skills, skills in English and without slides in this part. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> so uh, if you have any question now to ask me, and I am done, and thanks for listening. Anybody has a question, please come up to the microphone. I 
I just looked at the BOF schedule, and there's no open sessions, unfortunately. So maybe if you want to Twitter and like give us a spot we can all meet up at sometime over the next two days. I think it'd be really awesome to get down on the code for anybody else that's done this a little bit, but maybe wants to like see how you've done it and compare different methods. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Um, we've talked a lot about like sending content to different and data, um, and you talked about Guzzle and, and mentioned that it's part of Drupal 8. Can you go into a little bit more detail about your standard protocol for using Guzzle, or, or is there any other tools that you use to consume content that's provided by an API? Mm, okay, so the question was what I'm using uh, as a standard, my regular date to connect to web services or to create web services. Like, what are you using to pull down the data? Oh, okay. Uh, before that, just a sec. Uh, I have a friend who wants to share a uh, an idea about web services. It's a technology created with Drupal, right? You have the cards. He's going to. Actually, uh, I wrote a, a free ebook about how to create a social network using web services. So, if you guys want, I'll be distributing the cards uh, over here in the front. Thank you, Fernando. <laughs> no problem. You're welcome. So usually what I am using uh, to pull the data in Gassel is this function get. So I, I instance a class. I provide it with the endpoint URL. And then I provide it with a parameter like connect using JSON. I pass the array with the parameters. And I specify if the parameters are, uh, you know, if they are in post format, format or in get format. This is all HTTP. It's a bit complex. You just don't code. And it, uh, then I say connect or send. So it sends the data in the right format uh, to the to the server, and it, it grabs the data. Once it it grabs the data, it's like uh, the database layer of Drupal, it gets you the information parse it. So it, this, if this is in JSON, it will, get, it will provide you with an array already parsed. It will not provide you with the uh, you know, uh, raw data only. But you can access actually. You can access the property row, and it will show you the raw data if you need it you know, to process in another way. That's how I do it usually. Do you have any other question? Okay, so thanks again. <laughs>